Welcome to a code report algorithm video. In this video, we're going to be covering six algorithms from the STL algorithm library, min, max, min, max, min element, max element, and min, max element. For std min, we have a algorithm that returns the smallest of a and b. If both are equivalent, a is returned. And you can see here that our function min takes two const references to a and b and returns a const reference. Uh, to the result. And note that we have a version of this function that works with initializer lists as well. For std max, we have the exact same thing, but it returns the largest element instead. std min max has the same behavior, but returns not just one value, but a pair of values that represent the smallest and largest elements. For std min element, we have an algorithm that returns an iterator pointing to the element with the smallest value in the range first to last. Max element is the same thing, but returns just the largest value, an iterator pointing to the largest value. And min max element, similar to min max, returns a pair of iterators pointing to the elements with the smallest value in the range as the first element and the largest as the second. And note that the time complexity for all of these algorithms, uh, except for min and max, is linear. And for min and max, it's constant, and it's linear for the version that takes an initializer list. So let's take a look at some examples. So the first one's pretty trivial. We're just showing that the min and max functions given uh, two values will return uh, the minimum for min and the maximum for max, obviously. So moving on, there is a version of these two algorithms uh, that takes an initializer list. So I, didn't, I wasn't aware of these uh, versions, but they do exist. I'm not sure why. Uh, because typically you don't want to write code like this. If you use auto and braced initialization, this will deduce to an initializer list, which I guess you can then pass to min and max. So the following code will output the following. Moving on to the min max function. So here we have some pre C11 code. We have two integers, a which is equal to two and b which is equal to one. If we pass this to our min max algorithm and store it in a pair of ints, uh, we can access then the min and the max by going p dot first for the minimum and p dot second for the maximum. With C11, we now have type inference, so you can replace the explicit pair of integers with auto and do the same thing. So this is really nice. And I thought there would be a third way to write this in C11 using the tie function, which comes from the tuple library. Uh, but when I executed this piece of code, you get the following, which clearly is not correct, and that's because there's a bug in this line of code. And the bug is that a tie creates a tuple of L value references uh, to what you pass it. And because min max also returns a pair of references, effectively the A and B here are pointing to the same piece of memory. So when you set your A, to the minimum value, which here is going to be 1, uh, when it comes time to set b equal to the maximum value, which was uh, 2, it's now going to be gone. So it's going to get 1 as well. So the way to fix this is to write our own sort of version of this min-max function. So if we take a look at the implementation uh, that you might find in one of the uh, GCC or Clang libraries, you can see this is what it would look like. And if we just change this min max to a min max copy and get rid of the references that were in our pair, uh, our pairs that we return, we can then use this and get the uh, behavior that we expect. So using min max copy here, this will output min is one and max is two as we would like. So this is just something to keep in mind uh, when using the tie function with algorithms that return references. Taking a look at another version in C17, we have structured bindings now, so we can use this uh, syntax here where we have auto, uh, left bracket, and then right bracket, and then we can uh, destructure what is returned here. So uh, this is pretty nice because then we can name in the same line the variables that are re being returned in our pair. And note that because we're using type inference here, uh, the type is going to be deduced to what is returned by the min-max algorithm. So if we were to uh, try to reassign to one of these variables, we'd get an error. So this code outputs min is 1, max is 2. And if you were to try and add something like this, uh, you'd get a compile time error because min and max uh, underbar are both references. 
So for the final version of our min-max algorithm, it as well as the min and max algorithms can take uh, an initializer list as a parameter. So this will output min is 1 and max is 3. And for our last three algorithms, we have min element. Uh, so here we have a vector of integers that have just the values 1 to 5 uh, sort of randomized. And we can use uh, type inference. Uh, with min underbar equal to asterisk min underscore element, uh, the begin iterator and the pass the last element iterator, and this will output min is one. For max element, it's the exact same thing, uh, except it's just going to return the maximum value, which is five. And if we use min max element here and structured bindings as well, so this is C17 code, uh, we can get the following. And note that once again, because we're using type inference here, uh, the type inferred is going to be iterators, meaning that we need to dereference at this point here. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.